Makoto is brought to Hope's Peak Academy, a prestigious school for the best of the best. However, he and his fellow classmates are trapped inside, and a talking bear named Monokuma explains that the only way out is to kill someone without getting caught. A tense courtroom tale of betrayal and intrigue begins. Makoto is an ordinary high school student who was randomly chosen to attend Hope's Peak Academy, a prestigious school. However, upon entering, his vision goes blurry, and he reawakens inside a classroom. Hey, you, you're finally awake. He heads to the gym and meets his fellow classmates. Fortune teller Yasuhiro, Discord moderator and Ojinshi artist Hifumi, honor student Kiyotaka, fashion model Junko, genius programmer Chihiro, chronic gambler Celestia, gang leader Mondo, baseball ace Leon, varsity swimmer Aoi, martial artist Sakura, panicky novelist Toko, wealthy heir Byakuya, the mysterious Kyoko, and school idol Sayaka, his former schoolmate. They are addressed by Monokuma, a stuffed animal, and their principal. He announces that the only way out of here is to kill someone. Mondo grabs Monokuma out of frustration, but he explodes, nearly blowing off Mondo's arms. Monokuma reappears in another body, warning him not to try that again. After several attempts to break out of the gym, Makoto tries to mediate an argument between Byakuya and Mondo, prompting Mondo to punch him into another Skyrim port. Makoto reawakens to find Sayaka watching over him. They join the others, and Mondo apologizes for punching him. Their investigation yields several things. There is no way out, they are constantly monitored through cameras, and Chihiro reports that Monokuma will handle their food situation. Three days pass. Celestia suggests they ban leaving the rooms after dark for their own safety. Chihiro begins breaking down, and Aoi comforts her. Monokuma invites everyone into the AV room to give them a motive. Makanto watches a touching video of his family, but just as suddenly, they disappear, presumably kidnapping Monokuma. The others watch similarly disturbing videos, and Sayaka begins to panic. Makoto chases after her and manages to calm her down. They now have motive. They just need the means. Makoto and the others are shown their rooms, where Monokuma has prepared some gifts for them, including a decorative sword and supply tools. Monokuma announces that only female bathroom doors can be locked, while their water will be cut off at 10 p.m. Unable to open his bathroom door, Monokuma shows him the trick by pushing and slightly lifting the handle. Moments later, a distressed Sayaka arrives at his doorstep, and he agrees to swap rooms with her for the night. Curiously, she seems to know about his bathroom door's quirk. Makoto goes to Sayaka's room and falls asleep. The next morning, Makoto joins the others at the cafeteria. When Sayaka fails to appear, Makoto races back to his room and discovers her corpse. Makoto passes out and reawakens at the gymnasium. Monokuma confirms that Sayaka was killed by one of them, and if they can figure out the culprit, that person will be killed. However, if they accuse the wrong person, everyone else will be executed, and the murderer will walk. When Junko steps on Monokuma in protest, she's gate of Babylon. Celestia, Byakuya, and Kyoko take control. Yasuhiro alerts the others that their e-handbooks now have a Kuma Files tab, which shows details regarding Sayaka's death. Suspicion falls on Makoto when they learn Sayaka died in his room. Everyone begins gathering evidence for the upcoming trial. Sayaka died at approximately 1.30 a.m. from a knife stab wound, and her right wrist was also fractured, indicating a struggle. Ifumi and Makoto discover a burned wrist sleeve in a shattered glass orb near the incinerator, while a dying message, 11037, is discovered by her corpse. Kyoko notes that the nameplates on Sayaka and Makoto's room have been swapped. Makoto discovers Sayaka's DVD, which reveals that her idol group was forcibly disbanded. Monokuma assembles everyone, and Makoto joins them in the lift. Makoto is nervous. If only Phoenix Wright was here. Makoto and the others enter the courtroom with photos of Sayaka and Junko also taking the stands. Strangely, there are 16 stands when they are only 15. They begin discussing the murder weapon, the kitchen knife. Sakura and Aoi, who were in the kitchen the whole time, had witnessed Sayaka taking the knife. Toko and Ifumi are distrustful of Makoto, but Kyoto defends him, remarking that the bathroom door was destroyed. Mondo says Makoto likely broke the handle, but Makoto explains that only female bathroom doors can be locked. His door's handle was improperly fitted. Makoto recounts that Sayaka was too terrified to open the door, but Kyoko reveals a letter written by Sayaka, inviting an unnamed person to her room. Additionally, the nameplates on their rooms were intentionally swapped by Sayaka. Makoto can't believe it, but the hotter a girl is, the crazier they are. Yakuya deduces that Sayaka attempted to murder someone and frame Makoto. They are not any closer to the truth. Leon worries they are out of leads, but Makoto says they still have a clue. Sayaka's dying message. Reading 11037 flipped reveals the name Leon. Kyoko points out that Leon also attempted to destroy the evidence, the burnt sleeve and Yasuhiro's crystal ball. Makoto reconstructs what really happened. 
After Leon killed Sayaka in self-defense, he attempted to dispose of the evidence in the incinerator. Unfortunately, it was sealed shut, so he grabbed Yasuhiro's bolt to trigger the mechanism and tossed the shirt inside. Unfortunately, a sleeve fell to the ground. The only one who could have pulled it off was him, a baseball star. Leon panics, but he has no rebuttal. When he cannot explain where his tools are, which were used to unbolt the bathroom door, everyone unanimously votes for him. Leon is mercilessly dragged away and executed with baseballs. Later, Kyoko visits Mikoto and comforts him by revealing that Sayaka was likely thinking of a way to prove his innocence while she was trapped in the bathroom. Monokuma opens the second floor, which features a library and recreation rooms. Makoto discovers a letter indicating that the real-life school has been shut down. Monda is angered by Byakuya treating their situation as a game, but Celestia says this game can only have one winner, making them all enemies. Aoi invites Chihiro and the others to the pool. Monokuma instructs them to use their electronic handbook to gain access, but warns them that if a member of the opposite sex attempts to enter, they will be killed. Additionally, Monokuma adds a rule prohibiting the lending of electronic handbooks. Makoto encounters Toko in the library and observes her romantic delusions with Bikuya. He then runs into Monda and Kyotaka, who force him to referee their endurance contest. The next day, Monda and Kyotaka are now best friends, two bros chilling in a sauna two feet apart. Monokuma, bored that nobody's killing anyone, threatens to reveal their secrets if a murder doesn't occur in 24 hours. However, the secrets are quite childish, and many doubt anyone would kill over it. The next day, someone has killed over it. Bikuya and Makoto discover Chihiro's body in the changing rooms, strung up with an extension cord and bloodbath fever written behind her. She died at 2 a.m. from blunt force trauma to the head. The murder weapon is a barbell, and based on the bloody spray, it is unlikely the crime occurred elsewhere. Sakura notes that her protein coffee stain is gone. Strangely, a Gravure Girl poster is on the wall, while a boy band poster is in the men's room. Celestia testifies that she saw Chihiro holding a duffel bag with a tracksuit, which is now missing. Elsewhere, Kyoko discovers three electronic handbooks, Sayaka's, Junko's, and a third broken one. Bikuya suspects this to be the work of Genocide or Show, a notorious serial killer. He brings Makoto to the library and shows him a police report of the killer's modus operandi, a preference for killing men, using scissors, and crucifying their victims, though the final detail is not known to the public. Aoi calls them to Toko's room, who opens the door, apologizes for letting out Genocide or Show, and shuts herself in. Soon, Monokuma announces the next classroom trial. Byakuya announces that the culprit is Genocide or Show, Toko's violent, foul-mouthed split personality. However, the serial killer maintains her innocence, The Byakuya asserts that the modus operandi is exactly the same. Makoto points out several inconsistencies, including the use of a barbell and an extension cord to crucify the victim, whereas Genocide or Show prefers using scissors. Genocide or Show adds one more important detail. She only kills cute guys. Makoto accuses Bikuya, the only other person who knows Genocide or Show's M.O. However, Makoto realizes that the real murder site was in the men's dressing room, citing the misplaced carpet lacking Sakura's coffee stain and the graveyard poster. This reveals that Chihiro is not female, but male. Doesn't matter, looks female enough. Bikuya is genuinely shocked, though he admits he tampered with a crime scene, wanting to test their detective skills. Kyoko shares the three e-handbooks she discovered, while Celestia shares her sighting of Chihiro and her duffel bag with a tracksuit. Ondo carelessly remarks that Chihiro's tracksuit is blue, despite that detail never being confirmed. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Kyotaka is in disbelief. Makoto retells what happened. Chihiro entered the men's dressing room where Mondo used the barbell to kill him. Using either the dead Sayaka or Junko's e-handbook, he transferred the body to the girl's room and switched the rug and poster to make it seem like it occurred there. Kyotaka insists his friend is innocent, but Mondo refuses to explain, so Monokuma does so instead. Chihiro has a complex about his feminine appearance, so he chose to live as a girl. When Monokuma threatened to reveal their secrets, Chihiro decided to man up and ask Mondo to train him. However, Mondo has his own secret. He accidentally killed his brother during a reckless motorcycle race. Mondo, envying Chihiro's inner strength, killed him in blind rage. Kyoko notes that, to his credit, Mondo broke Chihiro's e-handbook and made it look like he was killed in the women's room to keep his gender a secret. Ignoring Kiyotaka's pleas, Monokuma straps Mondo to the back of a motorcycle and forcibly spins him inside a Simpsons movie cage. He's then electrocuted, made into butter, and served over hot pancakes. He was a snack, in more ways than one. Aoi discovers Chihiro's ghost while wandering out at night. The next morning, the third floor is opened. Though Kiyotaka remains despondent over Mondo's death, Monokuma gathers everyone and promises a 10 million yen reward to the person who graduates, but Makoto and the others are adamant about no longer killing. Aoi brings the others to the baths, where she saw Chihiro's ghost. Makoto discovers a broken laptop. 
which Chihiro fixed and programmed an AI named Alter Ego to analyze the hard drive's data. Crucially, Kyoko notices the baths have no cameras. Kyotaka is racked with guilt, so Alter Ego reconstructs Mondo using available data, which encourages his best friend to leave on. Alter Ego shows them a strange photo he discovered inside the laptop's files, a picture of Mondo, Leon, and Chihiro. Alter Ego becomes a point of conflict between Hifumi and Kyotaka, who both believe Alter Ego belongs to them. To protect their only lead, Kyoko bans entering the baths without permission. The next day, Alter Ego goes missing. Because Kyoko instructed Alter Ego to scream if either Kiyotaka or Ifumi visited him, it couldn't have been them. Mikuya says that a traitor is among us. The next morning, Makoto and the others go looking for their missing classmates. Aoi discovers Celestia, who has been attacked with a Justice Hammer Number 1. She warns that Ifumi was also attacked, and they find him injured in the second floor, along with Justice Hammer Number 2. Celestia says, at this rate, they'll all be killed, just like them. She shows them the photo of the culprit, a Gundam. They always knew those cosplayers were bad news. They split up, but in the chaos, both Hifumi and Kiyotaka are killed, both with Justice Hammers number 3 and 4. Strangely, both their bodies disappear. After scouring the floors, their bodies are discovered in the art room. A barely conscious Hifumi stammers that they might have known each other long ago. Before he dies, he says that Yasuhiro is the culprit. Makoto goes looking for Kyoko, who has discovered the Gundam outfit inside a locker with Yasuhiro in it. However, it is difficult to move in, and he claims that the previous night he received a note to meet someone but was knocked out. Makoto shows Kyoko the bodies. They make note of the evidence. Kyotaka and Ifumi clutching note scraps, Ifumi's clean glasses, a missing mallet from the kitchen, and a bloody trolley. During the trial, Celestia presents a box of cosplay tools she found in Yasuhiro's room, but Kyoko and Makoto point out that he would have been over-encumbered to move the bodies around. Kyoko deduces that Ifumi was playing dead and got up to move Kyotaka's body, which explains why his glasses were clean the second time they found him. Kyoko presents a letter that Kiyotaka was clutching, the rest of which was found in the most disgusting place on earth, Ifumi's underwear. Makoto deduces that the numbered hammers were meant to throw them off. Kiyotaka was likely killed first, and Ifumi was tricked into cooperating. Makoto realizes that Celestia said, this rate will all be killed, just like them. When they hadn't revealed Kiyotaka's death, she tries proving her innocence with the Gundam photo, but Makoto says this was simply Ifumi lifting the robot suit, while Ifumi's testimony that Yasuhiro killed them was just Celestia's true name. Celestia realizes she has been beaten. Celestia is voted out, when Akuma reveals her real name to be Yasuhiro Taiko. Celestia explains how she tricked Ifumi into helping her by showing him a photo of Alter Ego inside Kiyotaka's room. She hoped to use the 10 million yen reward to construct a private castle. The moral of the story is, remember to touch grass. She hands Kyoko a key, before she's burned at the stake and run over by a fire truck. Kyoko uses the key and discovers Alter Ego in another locker. Kyoko tells Makoto about a secret room she discovered in the men's bathroom. Venturing inside, he discovers a book telling him not to leave Hope's Peak, but he's attacked by an unknown assailant. When he comes to, everything in the room is gone, but he spies Sakura meeting with Monokuma. Sakura is revealed to be Monokuma's spy on the inside, a king's woman to let something slide. The next day, Makoto and the others explore the fourth floor, which houses the faculty room and chemistry room in which Sakura discovers a vial of poison. However, the data processing center and principal's office are locked. Makoto recounts to Kyoto what happened in the secret room. She asks if he's hiding anything, but he does not reveal Sakura's secret. Later, they discuss breaking into the principal's room, but Monokuma quickly places a ban on breaking doors. They visit Alter Ego, who has completed analyzing the hard drive's files. There exists a plan to forcibly confine students at Hope's Peak Academy after a certain incident almost led to the school's closure. The perpetrator is the school's principal, whom they assume is controlling Monokuma. They're also shown a photograph of Sayaka, Hifumi, and Celestia. Later, Monokuma reveals Sakura to be a spy, though Aoi defends her friend's actions. This leads to a tense confrontation that leads to Aoi striking Yakuya. The next day, Makoto discovers that Aoi has been injured by Genocider. Sakura is furious but she reassures the others that she won't do anything. Kyoko brings Makoto to Alter Ego, who wants to help them break out, so Makoto hooks him up to the internet in the hidden room. The next day, Kyoko alerts Makoto that Sakura is locked in the recreation room, and she isn't responding. He forces his way in, and they discover her seated corpse, as though she just fought a boxing match. Kyoko examines the evidence. She was killed by two strikes to the head with a blunt object. There are signs of vomiting, and there is yellow powder on her shoe. There are also three Monokuma bottles, an upside-down magazine, blood splatters near the display, and a shattered figurine. Stranger still is that the room is locked from the inside. Aoi accuses Bikuya, Toko, and Yasuhiro of being one of the culprits, as they were the last people to see Sakura alive. That's right, we've got a knives-out situation, minus Daniel Craig. 
they discover two more clues. A protein shake and yellow powder with footprints. Another classroom trial begins and Toko testifies that she witnessed Yasuhiro hitting Sakura. However, Makoto points out that Sakura was struck twice, leading Toko to call upon Genocider, who admits she also hit Sakura. However, this doesn't explain how Sakura's corpse was seated. Yakuya pulls out the poison, drinks it, and tosses it to Kyoko, who confirms that it is a protein shake. The culprit swapped the contents of the poison and the actual shake. The culprit accidentally caused the mess and Yakuya suggests they return there to compare footprints. Hearing this, Aoi admits that she killed Sakura. However, Makoto doubts that Aoi would kill her best friend. He asks her to explain how the door was locked from the inside, but pro tip, she can't. Kyoko shows the shards of glass inside the poison bottle and deduces that the protein bottle they discovered was planted to cover up her death. Makoto and Kyoto recreate what really happened. Sakura swapped the contents of the poison and protein shake, causing the mess in the chemistry room. After she was attacked by Yasuhiro and Genocider, Sakura asked Aoi for a protein shake. When Aoi saw the mess, she realized that Sakura already had the poison on hand, which he used to commit suicide. A flustered Bikuya is bewildered as to why Sakura would do this and why Aoi tried to cover it up. So Aoi pulls out Sakura's will, blaming the others for attacking her and pushing her to despair. But Monokuma brings out Sakura's real will. In it, Sakura explains that Monokuma took her dojo hostage. Guilty over being Monokuma's spy, she decides to commit suicide and prevent further violence. The surviving classmates are moved. They resolve not to kill anymore. However, Monokuma still has some fun and destroys Alter Ego with a giant digger. Later, Kyoko reveals to Makoto that there is a 16th classmate, Makuro. On the fifth floor, they discover a botanical garden, a storage shed, and a bloody classroom. Bikuya, tired of Kyoko acting on her own, demands that she either surrender her room key or admit her secrets. Kyoko maintains that she has amnesia and gives up her key. Toko shows them a survival knife she discovered, and Bikuya entrusts it to Makoto for safekeeping. They are summoned by Monokuma to the gymnasium furious that someone has stolen his treasure. Later, Kyoko meets Makoto and shows him a key, Monokuma's treasure, which he discovered in the principal's room, previously busted open by Sakura. The two enact a daring operation. While Makoto distracts Monokuma, Kyoko uses the key to sneak into a restricted area and gather information. That evening, Makoto has a delirious dream about the school, and he hallucinates a masked man standing over him with a knife. Moments later, he sees Kyoko mouthing unintelligible words. The next morning, Makoto discovers that the knife is missing. He joins the others in the gymnasium, where they are tinkering with a non-functioning Monokuma. Incidentally, Kyoko is nowhere to be found. They head to the principal's room and they instruct Toko to retrieve a pickaxe from the shed. However, Genocider returns instead, reporting that there is a corpse in the botanical gardens. When they arrive, Genocider attempts to unmask the victim, which results in the mask exploding. Mikuya assumes the victim must be Kyoko, but Makoto shares his knowledge regarding the 16th student, Mikuro. The corpse is ruined, though they notice he has a wolf tattoo on her right hand. Yakuya discovers another key, which opens the data processing room. There, Monokuma appears in the fluff and reveals he manipulated them into coming here. All this time, they were on national TV, like some sick Truman show. Furthermore, they still need to do a classroom trial. Kyoko is revealed to be alive and explains the corpse is Makuro, the high schooler of despair. Makoto and Bikuya discover several pieces of evidence, including a wooden plate key that opens a locker in the archery room where they discover several arrows and bloody duct tape. On the way to the trial, Kyoko reveals to Makoto that the Monokuma key can open any door. Bikuya accuses Kyoko as everyone else has alibis. She insinuates that Makoto was not with them either, but Bikuya establishes the time of death between 7.30 and 9 a.m. and Makoto was with them. He establishes the murder weapon, not the knife. The tightly bound arrows found in the locker are opened by the wooden key they found in her room. Kyoko points out she cannot enter her room without her key, but Makoto knows that she has the Monokuma key. Realizing she has something planned, Makoto buys time for Kyoko by pointing out the peculiar nature of the trial. Monokuma presses them to vote, and shockingly, Kyoko accuses Makoto of planting the wooden key in her room, and he is found guilty instead. Makoto is nearly executed by a trash compactor, but at the last second, Alter Ego takes control and Makoto falls harmlessly into the trash pit. I almost expected the three aliens from Toy Story to pop up. Makoto was not the imposter. Makoto finds himself inside a trash pit, but Kyoko returns to rescue him. She apologizes for sacrificing him, but he understands it was all planned. She reveals several details thanks to her memory returning. One, Makoto was supposed to die and she would have been framed. Fortunately, she got the jump on the mastermind. Two, her title is the school detective, and her father is the true principal of Hope Speak. They meet with the Monokuma who threatens to execute Makoto again. Kyoko challenges him to hold a retrial for Makuro's death, insinuating that his audience might find this more exciting. Monokuma accepts but adds a special twist. 
If they can uncover all the secrets of the Academy, all the surviving members will win. If they cannot, they will all be executed. Makoto shows up and says his death was greatly exaggerated. He shares details about the final trial and they all agree to work together. Monokuma removes all barriers and cancels all the rules, allowing them to freely explore the school. Makoto and Kyoto enter the principal's office, where Makoto discovers a hidden room by entering Kyoko's name as the password. Inside, they find Kyoko's father, now a pile of bones. Makoto discovers a memory card, which includes a video file of him and his classmates verbally agreeing to be confined at Hope Speak Academy. However, Monokuma pulls the plug, and the memory card is ruined. Elsewhere, Bikuya discovers Makuro's file, stating she was a member of Fenrir, a mercenary group. Afterwards, Monokuma leaves him a photo. In the locker room, Makoto discovers Yasuhiro's school materials and a notebook Kyoko wrote about a plan her father designed to make Hope Speak Academy a shelter. She also wrote of the existence of two despairs. Makoto visits the biology room and discovers Toko passed out. She springs to life as Genocider remarks in Makuro's multiple stab wounds and leaves. Makoto inspects the morgue and notices that only nine containers are in use. Monokuma gives him a photo of everyone without him in the frame. Everyone else receives similar photos, which leaves them disturbed. The curtain rises on the final classroom trial. Yasuhiro and the others each show photos they presumably took, but they all think they are fake. However, Makoto shares his discovery of Yasuhiro's locker and Kyoko's notebook. Adding the video interviews into the mix only means one thing. They are all suffering from amnesia. Monokuma confirms this to be true, but reminds them this trial is also about Makuro's death. However, Makoto knows the culprit is the mastermind. He points out that there are only nine containment units in use when ten of them have died, which means Makuro's body was a reused corpse, consistent with Junko's cause of death. Makoto says he was attacked last night, but it wasn't Makuro, as they were lacking her Fenrir tattoo. Monokuma accuses Kyoko of being the assailant, but she removes her gloves to prove her innocence, revealing nasty burn marks. Makoto declares that there can only be one person controlling Monokuma, Junko, a shocking revelation. Makoto points out that Monokuma attempted to conceal her identity multiple times, evident by her face being obscured in several photos. In reality, the Junko they met at the beginning was Makuro in disguise, killed in her place. Thus, the real culprit and mastermind behind the school killings is none other than Junko. Monokuma slacks, and after a puff of smoke, Junko appears, explaining she is Makuro's twin sister, thus the two despairs. Junko explains that someone had to work behind the scenes to be the mastermind, and it was judged that Makuro could not fulfill that role. Instead, Junko had her sister take place and killed her out of spite. Yakuya wants to get back on track regarding the mystery of the school, so Junko shows them a video feed of the outside world, which has descended into a purge situation. Unable to remember anything, they ask Toko to switch to Genocider, but she can only describe it as a man-made disaster so grave it almost feels like a natural one. Junko gives two more pieces of information. Yakuya's family, the Togami clan, has been wiped out, and the world as they know it ended nearly a year ago. But that doesn't make any sense. Surely only a few weeks have passed since they came here. But that isn't true. As the photos prove, they have been here for nearly two years. Junko says their first year is normal, but in their second year, a grave catastrophe occurred that changed everything, and it wasn't the Fire Nation. Hope's Peak was all but wiped out, and they were the only surviving class. So the shelter plan was initiated by Kyoko's father, the principal. They were locked inside by their own hands, ensuring they couldn't escape. Junko wanted to feel what remained of the world with despair by showing Hope Speak devolve into mindless killing. She begins the voting process but decides to add a twist. If they all vote to sacrifice Makoto, then the remaining will be allowed to live. Makoto's face turns white as he sees his fellow classmates consider the offer. Junko finally explains that the outside world has been destroyed by pollution. They are only alive thanks to an air purifier inside. However, if she dies, the machine will also deactivate, forcing them all outside. Using the talk no jutsu that Naruto taught him, Makoto gives a rousing speech, and they are all filled with hope, except Genocider, who will follow Byakuya anywhere. They all unanimously vote Junko out, and she is absolutely delighted to spread her despair to the world. She willingly presses the big red button, and she is subjected to every execution method the others experienced. The remaining survivors join to venture into the unknown world with nothing on their backs but hope. Meanwhile, Monokuma's body springs to life, asserting that he is and always will be their principal. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.